Hello, hello everyone. It is another Monday evening, but it's not just any Monday. It's a Monday when the Bills are playing and you're here instead. That's a choice. Uh, I'm very excited tonight though. We're talking all about Cassie and Andor, of course, but all the Disney Plus shows. When do these all take place in the timeline? We've bounced around in different time periods. We're going to tell you where all the shows are. We're going to tell you what books you can read around these eras. All kinds of great stuff on the show tonight, as well as some fun announcements about our community. But before we get to all that, after a long day of work, I'm going to ask a favor of the man and the myth, the Wes, to punch it. Welcome to the Living Force, the Utini Network podcast, all about Star Wars books and TV shows, if it keeps going this way. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Eilerson, and joining me tonight to dive into the Disney Plus timeline are the three best guys ever to do it. Starting off, we have back from his beach vacation, nay, still on his beach vacation, it's new pool hat wearing Dr. Corey Hilton. That up, is man? right. Hello. Hello. You like my new pool hat? It's kind of massive. It's like one it's of the incredible. largest hats I've ever seen. I didn't realize it was quite this big, but the camera kind of makes it look, look bigger. But look at it. It's got like flowers underneath it. Wow. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I've the totally camera, embraced the pool hat in Hawaii. The camera adds 10 pounds. It just added them it all does. to your head. <laughs> yeah, they look amazing. Says, 10 gallon hat yeah, yeah. Something like that. and you got yeah, your, man uh, um your guy in the background there too you're you're a hula yeah, dancer yeah, yeah, you're a surfer this, uh this hula dancer lamp behind me we take this off it's kind of itchy uh, on, this, on this camera yeah i got my hula dancer uh lamp back there we are we did two weeks on maui and now we're on uh Kauai. um it's a little bit northwest i guess of maui and uh the garden isle is what they call it and it's much Ooh. more lush and tropical at least what we saw driving in we just got here yesterday and uh it's a little more chill on this this island than it was on maui maui's pretty commercial a lot of tourists it's a lot of traffic and this is much more kind of laid back and that's sort of thing lilo and stitch was set on uh Kauai, just for the record should have led with um, that i know i know <laughs> uh, means family my guy that's right we, we watched the movie the other night to kind of oh uh, God, put us really? in the mood to go yeah yeah to kind of put us in the mood for the next island oh. and uh it was fun. We had a good morning. We did the, uh, there's a trail we hiked this morning, about a three mile trail, the Mahu'u Lepu Heritage Trail to Shipwreck Beach, which is a mouthful. It sounds like you practiced and, that. Uh, That's I did. awesome. I had, to, I had to practice it. I'm trying to get better at, at pronouncing the names. You know, it feels, if I will say, <laughs> as a white man visiting as a colonizer to Hawaii, it feels like you should really have to take an extra effort to like be respectful and try to pronounce yeah, things. So sure. I feel, I feel so bad every time I have to like ask somebody about a location. Cause I just, there are so many vowels in the Hawaiian, <laughs> Hawaiian language. It, flows, and, uh, man. it is very tough. All the street signs are really hard to read and that sort of thing. So, but we're having a good time. We're having a really good time. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of sun and hiking and that sort of stuff, and we're changing gears a little bit on uh, on Kauai. Tomorrow we're doing a, a helicopter tour, which I'm really excited Ooh. about. A doors off helicopter tour. <gasps> oh my god! Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. And it, Are we're you gonna, gonna fly play around. favorite sun as it as it goes around. Oh man, I hope so. That would be fantastic. Meow. We're gonna we're gonna fly around the like northwest side of Kauai, which is. Uh, I think it's the Nepali coast. I'm pretty sure is how you say it, and uh, that's where like all the like really tropical movies, like Jurassic Park, and that sort of stuff. Where like where you're like, where did they find this untouched piece of land that they could film this? That's all on this island, like Jurassic Park, and all that was filmed on Kauai. And uh, I'm really jacked for that. I'm excited. There's a there's a ton of space that's just totally untouched uh, government land, basically, and. We're going to see that tomorrow. So sorry to ramble so much about my whole life, no. but I missed you guys last week. And, uh, you know, we're having a good time. Um, we were starting to get a little homesick at the end of last week. Uh, I won't I won't lie. Um, but we've sort of found a, a new a new second win, I guess, on, on this island. I guess it 
it also looks a little closer to home, which is interesting. Uh, Asheville is, sure. you know, all, all mountains and Kauai is these huge cliffs and big mountains. And I don't know, it's just different. It's weird. It's so crazy that these islands are just, I mean, it was a t- like a 30 minute plane ride, like from one island to the other. So like, it's very interesting how diverse and incredible this landscape is. And uh, we're having a really good time. And, uh, you know, I hope we can have a, we have a good show. Man, I love all of that. It sounds like an incredible Incredible week. Uh, Dr. Charles Hanko went to work. What's up? Yeah, how, how do I follow that? Uh, how do I follow Sorry, that? Charles. Sorry. There's, a, there's a really beautiful drive on my way to work. I took the same one uh, five days in a row, home and back. So that was cool. Uh, there's some trees that I saw. Uh, I think they filmed a Bud Light commercial somewhere along that. Um, that's it. That's like, I'm here. I'm here. I hope we have a good show, too. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you. Oh, man. We've had so much change with the two of you over the last week, clearly. But no one has been more constant than our rock, our foundation, our boulder among the <laughs> raging sea, Wes Jenkins. What's up, buddy? What's up? Um, I'm, <clears throat> if you recall last week, I got a mystery charge on my credit card and it was from Barnes and Noble and they finally came in. <gasps> oh, oh nice. wow. these guys. Dude. Are they still in the They're plastic? So or still in the plastic because I don't know if I'm yeah, going to hawk them on eBay. <laughs> fair. That's fair. But, wow. Uh, they're, yeah, they're still in the plastic. Um, but... Yesterday was fun. I took my parents to the Houston Astros game for my mother's birthday. Oh, and, happy cool. um, birthday! Yeah, she had a she had a good time. My dad is kind of one of those people who he doesn't want to let you know he's having a good time. He just doesn't want to be bothered, and he he mm. was having a good time, but he doesn't really show it. So I went downstairs and got him a fifteen dollar margarita, and I told him to loosen to loosen up. So he did after a while. <laughs> he's like, "Man, I really like this." So I was like, "Yeah, I bet you do." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's fantastic. Listen, oh, what tequila always makes everybody listen up, all right? It's, it's an upper, the, baby. It's just the magic. It's the magic magic one. Uh, yeah, for sure. As we endorse. Well, we are all feeling good tonight. Uh, glad to see all of you hanging out with us in the chat and listening to us later on in the week. We're hoping you're having a lovely week. I will say, tonight is probably the most jealous I've ever been of our audio listeners because you're living in a world where you have already seen Andor. The first three episodes will be out by the time this audio hits the podcatchers. And uh, on that note, happy Andor week, everybody. Uh, I did want to just uh, address the Mm. Andor launch event that happened this past week. Um, If you follow like anyone on Star Wars Twitter, you're probably aware of it because a lot of amazing folks like Alex and Molly from Star Wars Explained, the Sky Talkers, Brad and Sarah from Friends of the Force, uh, that gay Jedi and Brian from Pink Milk, like so many people in like the community that we know and that we love got to go to Los Angeles, Hollywood, California and watch the first three episodes of Andor at the El Capitan and then the embargo dropped and no spoilers, obviously, but like... The, the the hype for Andor has <laughs> now gotten so stratospheric because every person coming out of that premiere just had nothing but raves to say about it. Did you guys, I know you guys don't wade into the online discourse as much, but did you, any of you guys see like some of the initial reactions to the Andor? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some of it. I read somebody's, I can't remember who's I read someone's recently. And it was just, I've not really seen any negative stuff <laughs> i mean nice. not really i mean it's it's a little i don't know i'm like a little weirdly nervous i guess about it because <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. so good like I, I i don't know i mean i'm, I'm afraid to i'm to afraid want, to, to hope. i'm af- exactly i'm afraid <laughs> to hope to you know i'm cautiously optimistic is like a good attitude to have i think going into mm-hmm. any star wars project yeah. and uh this one sounds like it is borderline Wallace, which is <laughs> kind of scary. Expectations. I know. Yeah. Seriously. Oh, what seriously. What did they see during their premiere? Did they see one episode or all three? First three. Oh. And I will say some tips for those of you that, t- that are tuning in live or, or to the show maybe tomorrow. Um, a couple tips we did here. The first three episodes are best watched as one chunk. So if you can take it, uh, like it's like I think an hour 45 minutes is, <clears> is the <throat> runtime of all three. Uh, so take two hours if you can and just like turn your phone off from what I've heard and just like watch it as a movie. Because as we said in last week's show, 
this first season is broken up into four three episode arcs so like the same director did all the episodes it's it moves as one solid thing i have heard that it does start a little slow but if you do watch it all at once that's kind of like a movie right it's like yeah. gets you in so uh in my mind we're getting a star wars movie on wednesday uh, hour 45 minutes man a rogue one themed star wars movie i honestly just can't Ooh. believe that we're here I, andor has yeah. always been the project like like that's sort of been in the back to me like it's yeah. it's just always yeah. like it's the one that we've been we've been hearing about forever and that's how rogue one felt for the longest time like when when they announced force awakens they almost immediately announced that they're making this you know death star themed movie Do you guys remember that teaser that classic teaser yes. where you hear like the tie fighter and it the, the camera just goes up on indoor and you see the the death star you remember that teaser mm -hmm. that's andor has felt <laughs> like this in a lot of ways like it's just been like we've known it's going to happen forever but yeah. it never felt like it was going to get here like obi-wan felt like it was going to get here like you know sure, animated sure. stuff felt like it was going to get here andor has always felt like it's just never going to get here and mm -hmm. we're here and it's got all this positive hype and like it's in two days and what what the hell what, what? yeah <laughs> I just can't believe it. I can't believe this is here. It's really insane to me that yeah. we're finally at this moment. So it's going to be wild. I already took the morning off of work officially. I'm like, nice. I'm going in at noon. I'm going to give myself some time. <clears throat> so again, everyone, if you want to join in on the conversation, head over to the Andor channel and our Discord. Everyone is very good about using spoiler tags there as well. Uh, we have a very strict spoiler policy. If any of you guys are in the channel and you see someone that's throwing in spoilers, tag a moderator. Um, Basically, every mod will be watching it early, so we won't get spoiled. But try to be respectful. Again, use the double brackets if you need rules and Discord <clears throat> etiquette. Of course, many people are always willing to help you over there in a positive, excited community about the newest Star Wars television show. Now, a quick thank you. I want to say at the top of the show here. Uh, last week, we dropped our Asheville documentary where the four of us, plus our Awesome friend, Timothy Guthrie, met each other in Asheville for the first time earlier this year. I already see in the chat, Brandon, you just finished it before coming in here. Thank you so much. And Stephanie, you watched it as well. Uh, last I checked, which was a little while ago, we already had over 50 views of the mm -hmm. documentary. And that's a Patreon exclusive. So that's people that have joined up and that wanted to watch it. And just the, the support has very much been overwhelming. This is a very personal project for all of us. And I guess... I just want to say thank you all for loving it like we did. I mean, our our yeah. patrons channel and Discord has been so positive. It's been very it's been a very emotional week, I think. It has been. It has been. I watched uh I watched part of it on the plane. Uh <laughs> oh on yeah. The, on, the, on the way in. But something weird happened with the download where the way I was watching it and it, I couldn't watch the rest of it. But like yeah, I'm I'm that's a good way to put it that this is a very personal project to us. I was a little nervous about releasing a something like that. I mean, it's so I mean everything else we do on Patreon is about star Wars and it's about, you know, this thing that we do. And that was more about us and our personal lives and us being friends, yeah. I think than anything we've ever done. So mm -hmm. like, I was yeah. a little nervous about doing that. I was hoping it was going to be received well. And we've gotten, like you say, nothing but positive feedback about that, which has been yeah. really, really fun and encouraging. And like, that means a lot to us that people feel like, I don't know. They're like our extended friend group in a lot of ways. Yeah, Even though we don't talk so in person, we rarely talk directly. We like, I don't know. We rare, we rarely like interact with Patreon. It's just not that type of platform in which you really interact with the folks on an individual level that much. And to see what it's like to have, you know, internet friends in a lot of ways, that's kind of what it represents, I guess, to them and the relationship yeah. they have with us is like this internet friend thing. So I guess what I'm trying to say is just thank you, you know, for the support. It's been really overwhelming and really awesome. And uh, that's been one of the most fun projects I think we've ever created. And like yeah. to me, like since we started Utini and all these years. So I'm just pleased that it came together. And Nathan did a hell of a job editing it. I mean, it's like, it looks yeah. professionally edited. Like, like you would see it on like it a is. major video Straight platform. Up. Like it, it is super, super good. And yeah. uh, the day Nathan realizes his full worth with us is the day we are doomed. Completely. Oh yeah, we're screwed. Nathan, I love you, yeah. buddy. Uh, if y'all <laughs> so really good. like that documentary, make sure you let us know because maybe we'll do another one. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. I mean, we, I don't know. Nothing's for sure yet, but like we're buddies across the country that want to see each other again. So let us yeah. know. And we're always willing to do more things. So it was very nice Tim to hear stones. the feedback just because we were pretty vulnerable. No, nobody really yeah, we were. knew yeah. each other. So um, putting yourself out there and then getting great feedback like that just 
kind of yeah. solidifies the how great it was to, to meet everybody in person. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And if we hit fifteen thousand dollars on Patreon, we'll do the full uncut, unmuted uh, antidote night. And if you've watched it, you'll know what that means. Um, <laughs> oh Lord! All right. Other than that, uh, speaking of community, I did want to highlight something amazing that's coming up in our uh, Discord community. Uh, our very, very good friends, uh, Blind Fates and Moonflyer, um, better known by their real names, which you got to find out for yourself, have put together the ultimate. High Republic Phase 1 character bracket. Now, what is that, you may ask? This is a celebration of the High Republic in honor of Phase 2 starting very soon. As some of you on video may have noticed, the Phase 2 ARC is behind me. But this is the Utini, like, March Madness-esque bracket challenge. So we've done some of these in the past in Discord. Essentially, what it is, is we have put all the main High Republic characters in competition against each other. And starting tomorrow night on the 20th, you will be able to go to the High Republic Discord channel and vote in head-to-head -head competitions over day after day after day. And eventually, we will crown the official Phase 1 Utini community favorite character before Phase 2 begins. Now, what's so fun about this is, of course, because it's a Discord channel, you can jump in there. You can tell people who to vote for. You can campaign for your favorites. Have fun with it. And we really hope it's a great way for the community to get, like, really, really stoked about Phase 2 before it comes out in a month. And, again, a huge shout-out to our community event organizers on that. If you would like to join, go over to eugene.com slash Discord. There is an event banner, which is a fun thing. Again, shout-out to Jose, who put together that graphic, which you just saw on the screen um that you can join very easily so we're super stoked head over to the announcement section for more information as well and get ready to vote for your favorite characters um fellas real quick let's go around in a circle who do you think should win this uh charles on the spot high republic phase one best character who's gonna win Uriaga. nice uh cory who's gonna win elzar man yay -hoo! all right wes who's gonna win marquion Rowe. Oh man, that's a good one. All right, um, I'm gonna say, oh, Geode. I don't know. I think <laughs> Geode. He, I think, oh, damn God. it, you're right. Yep. That's gonna be okay, the one. Here's what I'll say. I, I think he <laughs> will win. Who I think should win, though, I'll, I'll, I'll double that. Um, I'd say uh, maybe Avar. Maybe Avar. Yeah. 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 But we'll see. We'll be we'll, we'll be voting. Of course, all of us get the same one vote as everyone else does. So head on over to the Discord. We cannot wait to enjoy that over the next few weeks. Yoda. <laughs> I swear to God. He's got to oh, be he's in fine. there. He's fine. He's fine. All uh, right. And last Oppo update. Rancisis. Go ahead. Up, <laughs> doing those fingernails, man. I'm, I'm going to find a life-size Oppo and buy it for you for Christmas one year. I oh, swear to God. Nightmare. That's disgusting. Put it in his bedroom. Yeah, it's like, a good, over him like at night. It's, it's a good terrible. way to keep burglars away. <laughs> it absolutely is. Oh, last thing I would update y'all with before we get into our official uh, Patreon discussions of the week. Um, the Utini Fantasy Update. Every week the Utini Fantasy League is going on, and your boy lost again. <laughs> but um, it's like I didn't expect the Tampa Bay defense to score 30 points, James. <laughs> anyway, I'm fine. Uh, I do want to congratulate our high scorer. Uh, last week, I it was the wrong person because Monday Night Football still had to happen. That does happen right now, but there's no way anyone is going to catch our very own Andrew Bell, who, much to our dismay, is dominating uh, fantasy uh, thanks to Tua Tungavailoa's 53 fantasy points Unreal. this week. Um, Andrew did threaten that he will somehow become even more insufferable if he wins this league, so I'm concerned at how likely that is looking. <laughs> <sighs> I'll get better at this, guys. But congratulations, Andrew. And I hope all of you that are playing fantasy are having a great time here as well. And one more shout-out, not fantasy-related. Uh, Jim Breslin on our team. I wanted to give a shout-out on the show. Uh, because this past week, Jim combed through our entire Utini database to ensure that every single book that is in a series accurately reflects it. Uh, we don't talk all the time about the database team here. But at Utini.com, we do pride ourselves with having the most accurate book database on the web in this and any galaxy and Jim ensured that we did that this week. So uh, go check that out. If you're reading a series now at utini.com, when you look at the book profile, you will see that series accurately. So thank you, Jim. 
But sorry, a much bigger thank you goes to our Patreon. Uh, our patrons at patreon.com slash utini. Uh, we had an influx of patrons this past week. Thank you so much. We want to thank Admiral Akbar in 1983, who became an annual patron and talked about how much they loved binging the Star Wars archives right when they jumped on Patreon. What a great way to use that Patreon. We also got a new Alliance High Command member at the annual level, uh, Ashley Ingalls. Thank you so much. Welcome. We're going to talk about you at the end of the show as well. We also got Sonia White and CJ Pfeiffer as an annual and monthly patron, respectively. Thank you so much. Whether you joined for the documentary, whether you joined for the shows, whether you joined just to help us out, it all means the world. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. All right. A lot of news up top. Um, but of course, no weekly roundup this week because it's all and or all the way. So all I want to do tonight is remind you all <clears throat> to go to the utd.com release schedule in the midst of all this. Make sure you get your pre-orders up because, as I mentioned earlier, the High Republic Phase 2 is coming. Path of Deceit by Tessa Gratton and Justina Ireland is coming on October 4th. And The Quest for the Hidden City by George Mann is coming November 1st. If you've never read a YA or a middle grade novel, The High Republic is the place to start. They're so freaking good. All right. Now, for the main purpose of our show, fellas, um, when we were thinking about what to do this week, because we were going to do a Princess and the Scoundrel roundtable, and then life happened. It got a little long. We're doing that next week. But tonight, we're like, Andor is coming. We had a giant Andor preview show. What can we talk about? And Wes, you had a great idea, and I want to give you the floor because you are the reason that tonight's show is happening. So, so what conversation ensued when we were talking about tonight's show? So <clears throat> this show, yes, came about because of me. We were doing this show because I am confused. Not normally, <laughs> not normally confused like I like I usually am. Sometimes I don't know where we are in the Star Wars timeline when you're watching a show, right? Like, so with Andor, what is it? Is it 15 years before the Battle of Yavin? Is that where we start in season one? Five years before five the years, Battle of Yavin. Five, see, there you go. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. We can you can pinpoint these different spots in the timeline. Yet, what about Mando? When does that happen? How far along does that happen after the timeline? What about the Bad Batch? What about the Clone Wars? Star Wars Rebels? When is all that? taking place while Andor is going on. How old is Cassian Andor when the Clone Wars is going on? Or is he even born yet? Stuff like that. So I kind of need some structure to my Star Wars so I can figure out where everything is on the timeline so I can put these stories in, in, co in a cohesive unit. So because I am confused, we are doing episode 181. <laughs> <laughs> you are the reason for the season, Wes, and I love that. And I think we realized that, you know, the timeline is one of our most visited pages on the whole website. People are always going to the timeline to see when stuff takes place. We, again, pride ourselves in having the most accurate timeline on the, on the internet, in the galaxy, in every universe. Uh, shout out to Trev, who always makes sure we're on top of everything. Um, you know, who, who made a timeline that was used in the official Star Wars timelines, but no big deal. Uh, but we also realized that, you know, as you're looking at these shows, a lot of folks might be watching these shows with people that aren't as familiar with Star Wars. I mean, Disney Plus has been such a huge way to bring things like The Mandalorian to people uh, who have maybe not even watched the saga films, but watch TV shows. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to let you all know where all these shows take place, when they take place, and then just for fun, because we are a book show, we're going to tell you what books take place around here so you can kind of help figure out where you are in time. And also, if you love a specific time period, what books can you read next? So, to start us off, Wes, since it's your idea for the show, we're going to start off with three shows that take place in literally the same year. So go ahead. I'm going to vamp here while you get back to the outline. <laughs> and tell us what three shows are we starting with tonight? And what year do they take place? And then we'll kind of go from there. Okay. So show number one, we're starting out with Mandalorian season one. Yes, sir. Mandalorian season one. So next, Mandalorian season two. Never would have thought. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Incredible. And piggybacking on this, you'll never guess, Star Trek, the next generation. No! <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Just kidding. But, oh, Book of Boba Fett, season one. So those three 
are the main ones that we'd be talking about. Both take place, or all three, I guess, take place in 9 ABY, after the Battle of Yavin. So, it helps, after the Battle of Yavin, 9 ABY, is that, that's after Return of the Jedi, correct? Correct! Yeah. Okay. Return of the Jedi is is what? Is that uh like four? It's five, four, five, something like that? Yeah. five, four, five, something like that. Okay. Top of my head. So then Absolutely. we have so, four years after Return of the Jedi, after Death Star Two is blown mm-hmm. up, mm-hmm. and the Empire is somewhat disbanded, but it's still kind of mm-hmm. hanging around, like we kind of know. So that's how we get Mandalorian season one, two, and Book of Boba Fett season one. Those all are encompassed five years after Return of the Jedi. That's right. And this is technically the New Republic era, right? So, guys, let me ask you, even before we go into some specifics, what do you think about this era as a whole? Like, I know we got the Mando stories, but this is like the tumultuous, we don't know who's going to rule yet, where is the capital? Like, it it is very much a transitionary period that we've actually gotten quite a few books about that we'll talk about in a second. But what does this beginning of the New Republic era do for you? I will say that I know we're going to talk about this in a second in regards to legends, but uh, in the legends universe, which is very closely tied to my own personal kind of like star Wars book introduction and journey. Like this was the most exciting period of books for me when I first Mm -hmm. started getting into the books is like, because, you know, you ultimately want the, you always want the story to never end. Right. Like, I mean, you're reading the, if you've read the Harry Potter series, like you start, you get to the, you know, one of the last books or you're watching, even if you're watching the films, like you get to the fourth movie or the fifth movie, you start getting that sort of like a little subtle melancholy dread that it's going to mm-hmm. end. You know what I'm talking about? So like, yeah. You know, oh, I don't I was, want it to end, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> That's Harry Potter, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> What you fall down for? I remember that. I never forget that. He falls off the bus and the what's the guy's name? The guy in the bus? I can't remember. Like, what you fall remember. down for? Anyway, that's my impression. There you go. Uh, yeah, this this you never want the story to end, and that's kind of yeah. what this era did for me. Like back in the day, it just mm-hmm. it was the you know the main trio of Han, Luke, and Leia, and you know what their kids were up to, and like how the galaxy changed and like so it was it was it's always been a really rich era in star wars storytelling that that era after the movies right because it was the last yeah. films we got the furthest fo- the furthest forward we'd ever gotten the richest time you know the richest storytelling in my opinion now mm-hmm. if we kind of look at this from the different lens of now and modern storytelling with canon is very different i mean this yeah. era is still in a lot of ways largely untouched um mm-hmm. You know, that like in, in the Legends era, we did essentially just continue. I mean, the Thrawn books <laughs> is basically right after the films, right? And, yeah. you know, so we, we just continued. And that has not really yet been done in, in canon. We haven't really just continued. And we've got little peaks and glimpses of what, you know, the main trio has been up to and and that sort of thing. But we haven't just been like... You know, here the the we're starting to we're starting to get that 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 time right where uh, like the princess and the scoundrel sort of picks up right yeah. after Battle mm-hmm. of Endor, right? So like, you know, this it's very interesting that we're finally getting these pieces filled in, and I still think there's a lot of work to be done here in regards to filling in this time period. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we still know virtually nothing about how the first order sort of rose to power. We don't know what those first conflict. Like, I really want to know what that looks like. Like, what does the first conflicts look like? How did the how did everybody realize that? Oh, this is a new villain, right? It's a new bad guy. Yeah, right. the first order. They look like stormtroopers, but they're not. You know, like <laughs> get all this money. Where they get know. all this money from? So exactly, that's... exactly. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm most yeah. interested and excited for that sort of period of storytelling. So, it's very interesting that <clears throat> Mandalorian and Book Book of Boba Fett is taking place kind of in this era because, like, those gigantic major questions still have not been answered for fans. And I think that led to a lot of confusion uh, about yeah. the Mandalorian. I mean, there were so many articles online when that show first came out about when does this take place? Is it actually baby Yoda? You know what I mean? So like, right. I feel like it was sort of, it was an odd choice, excellent storytelling, but an odd choice to set a TV show, you know, in this era of post battle of Endor without, really any of the context yet decided on does that make sense like yeah yeah it, it does yeah. sort of I, I i'm still yeah. a little i feel a little confused about the state of the galaxy even though we have three seasons of tv shows about yeah. it like well what are your thoughts yeah maybe they want you to think that 
Because I think a lot of people are confused. So mm -hmm. yeah. in, in that regard, because the New Republic itself is, it's like a spider web. It's not fully formed, like like fully mm -hmm. filled in. Mm -hmm. There's all these holes, mm -hmm. you know. That's, I mean, that they're, um, like their stretch takes <clears throat> pretty far across the galaxy, but they don't have yeah. they don't have the muscle. They don't have the might to enforce a lot of that, right? So that's right. when, yeah, mm -hmm. that's when like the governors are still in, involved. I know. And they the seem moths. weak, right? Like yeah. to me, the New Republic they seems are, yeah. like super weak. Like, well, and that and that's what I find interesting yeah. about that specifically because we 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 get some stories about the formation of the New Republic. Like, for instance, around this time period, we're nine eight, we're nine ABY, as Wes so eloquently said earlier. So <laughs> let me put you this in context for you book readers and listeners here. Just a little bit earlier, in five ABY, that's when the Alphabet Squadron trilogy ends. In 5 ABY, that's also where the Aftermath trilogy ends. So those are both four years beforehand. In Lost Stars, that also ends in 5 ABY. So three kind of massive <clears throat> books and, and moments in, in the canon literature, there is yeah. a four-year gap until we get to Mandalorian. So when you guys are watching this show and you're wondering, oh my gosh, is this close to Erica Quell? And oh my, are we going to see um like oh. Snap and Nora? We, there, was a, there was four years between this yeah. so, so long there's time. been a little time. bit of calm down but canonically as of right now i found this fascinating the closest book we get to mandalorian is last shot by daniel jose older which ends wow. in 7 Great abby book. so if you want to read some of that and we got a little bit of baby ben solo in there we got yeah. a little bit of old han and that book ends in 7 abby which is two years before mando mm -hmm. so and then we have this huge jump until we get yeah, to put hammer and free fall. So canonically, yeah, right. That's even then, about in, where in, we in are. the films, and we're going to get to this, obviously, but the, and then, you know, just for context right now, while we're talking about it, you know, Force Awakens is what, 32, I think, ABY. So, like, there's a huge amount of time here still yes. between the movies, which is why it was such an interesting choice. Maybe even I'm not sure interesting is the right word. I might be willing to choose a little bit more of a negative word here, actually. Ooh. Maybe maybe sort of a drastic or maybe inappropriate choice. I'm not sure what the right word is. Risky, failed risk choice, maybe I would say to to set Force Awakens so far forward because, like, you know, we we started the galaxy in a lot of ways looks very similar to the way it right. did, you know, in indoor with the first order there. I mean, there's yep. stormtroopers and there's star destroyers right. and mm -hmm. it's, it's the rebellion versus the empire still after 30 years, like it's a little Ish. bit odd to me. So like, I still feel like even to this day, there is a lot of work to do in regards to this period of time. And I think, you know, if I'm going to jump way forward in this conversation, if we want to, there are some predictions out. I think this major story gap is what we're essentially leading up to right now with the Filoni verse and Mandalorian yeah. and the Ahsoka TV show. I think it's going to all tie into what Luke is up to and then rebuilding the order and then what Leia mm -hmm. is up to. I think all this is going to kind of be like deeply related, but I honestly, I don't think that we're going to start getting those, you know, Thrawn trilogy type of stories featuring the original trilogy, honestly, until all that is done until, yeah. you know, Dave Filoni and, and John Favreau, they, they say, all right, we're done with this time period. Is that going to happen? Are they ever going to stop telling? I don't know. I mean, I mean, they love these characters, well, but as frustrating as yeah. it is to have these holes and to, and to sometimes get confused and be like, where are we? It also lets you know that anything that they're putting out in this, in this time period around this, these TV shows, like they're really dedicated to these ideas. Like yes, you don't, true. you don't mm -hmm. lightly throw this stuff out there. That is like the, you know, the <clears throat> frontier of the star Wars timeline. Like they can go that direction right. as far as they want, but anything they establish now is established. Right. Cause they made, yeah. you know, such a big deal about, no, this is Canon now and everything we put <clears throat> out is Canon. Right. So it, it it's, got a big stamp of approval on it if we're getting it it does yeah it does and that, that's hard to do and i yeah. feel like that's the uh i don't know the what the right term like the star wars storytelling pit of despair maybe <laughs> would be a good name to call it is like that's what it is like star wars has this long long history since the very very beginning of starting with a conclusion of a story, right? Because that's what episode four is. It's the conclusion of a story. It's episode four, right? It's yeah, not right. episode one, right? So 
it seems like that is almost the Star Wars tradition is we we tell the finale before we, you know, before we tell the beginning, kind of like, you know, Shakespeare and and that sort of storytelling where you get the whole story in the intro. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and it's hard. It's hard to do. I always think that it's a, a bigger risk to you know, to start with the ending of the story, because now we have to explain how we get from point A to point B, which, you know, may or may not please the fans, right? It's a risky sort of strategy, right. I feel like. So I feel like it's a little easier to, you know, we're going to have the Yuuzhan Vong War. We have no idea how the hell this is going to conclude, right? <laughs> <laughs> like that is yeah. that is easier to yeah. do, I feel like, than to try to yeah. fill in gaps. So, you know, it's it's it, it, it's both a, a good and a bad thing for me personally of like, yeah. you know, I'm excited to read the stories when we finally get around to them. But like it's, it, there has to be a whole lot of managing expectations because like, if it's not done like just right, it might not fit well <laughs> with you with your head cannon and that sort yeah. of thing. So it's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. This, this entire conversation just around the fact that we have these live action shows that start in this weird time place is mm -hmm. so interesting. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. And we still know nothing. Even after three yeah. seasons of this show, we know nothing about the state of the galaxy because they're, it's been explained that these guys are kind of out there. You know, they're in the outer rim. Yeah. Nothing friggin' matters out there, right? Nope. Until we get our political intrigue show, which, I mean, well, I mean, I guess we're getting, <laughs> we're getting ahead of ourselves for right now. Uh, yeah. But I do want to say, just to confuse slightly more, before we get into our second uh, batch of shows, uh, if you're not confused enough by what's happening in canon, I just want to put it in perspective of what was happening in Legends in 9ABY. Because I thought that would be fun. Now, for those yeah. listening, these are different timelines. If you mm -hmm. haven't uh, had a lot of experience between canon and Legends, we have a great article on the site all about it. Check it out. Um, but if you are a Legends fan and you're watching these new shows, for context, this is what was happening in the year... Mandalorian season one came out. Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command by Timothy Zahn all came out in the exact same year as Mandalorian season one. 9 wow. ABY. So, hypothetically, <laughs> all of that was happening while Mando <laughs> was just like cruising around. I know. I know. Hanging this is out. like, you know, I think the, the good analogy to use here is that, like, this is the one real true fork in the road. I think between canon and legends yes. is, yep. is, is, ep is episode six, right? It's the battle of Endor. After that canon legends are virtually dissimilar. I mean, they're not yes. really in any way. They're totally completely different. I mean, you know, yeah. so I've always sort of visualized that in my mind that you either have heir to the empire in the Thrawn trilogy, or you have whatever we have in canon, right? Like that's, yep. that's the only two options, right? So yeah. 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 And I find it fascinating because we also get uh, X-Wing Ice Hard's Revenge by Michael Stackpole right. in that same year. Uh, and then two years afterwards, again, another huge fork, which may have a spiritual successor in canon. We'll see. But in 11 ABY and Legends, we get the full Jedi Academy trilogy by Kevin J. Anderson, mm -hmm. which, based on the Book of Boba Fett episodes, could absolutely be being made currently, right? We might be getting right. that Academy. So that would be really fun. Um, obviously we don't have like the twins necessarily, but Ben Solo is alive. A lot of possibilities going on there. Um, uh, and then of course I could not go any further without mentioning that 11 ABY also features iJedi. So, uh, <laughs> we got more and more. It does. We got it does. What is there. very, which is, a, it is a fun, you know, all jokes aside with iJedi and everything. It is a fun kind of thing to think about because, you know, I Jedi is set in a time period in Legends in which that in this very short period of time, short is relative, I suppose, just between four ABY and 11 ABY, mm -hmm. Luke had completely rebuilt the Jedi Temple at this point. Like, I mean, there's a ton of Jedi. Yeah, boy, a lot of them. Fast. Yeah, he saying. did. Yeah, he <laughs> worked he really, really fast. Like, like, it's not in any way like the old Jedi were at this point, but it's it's certainly on its way to being that. I mean, the Jedi yes. temple has got Jedi in it and there's yep. a council and Luke is head of the council. And so like, it is very different than Canon at yes. this point, which is a very interesting, it's very interesting to me that that's the route that they chose to go in the old school legends, right? Is yep. they were like, all right, indoors over the rebellion won, everything is back to normal. You know, that's kind of how it is. And yeah, it is not in any way how it is in Legends. Luke is very, or in canon, I mean, Luke is obviously yeah. very troubled. Like he's, 
very serious as we've seen yeah. in the Mandalorian. Like he has like his first possible apprentice show up and then that apprentice says, nah, bro, I'm going to go back to my dad. I know. Sorry. Yeah. There's not and many he, of them. I mean, in the comics and stuff, how many, there's like 12. Also, or, you I don't know, know what, how, guys, many, how many think there are by at this point, by the way, actually, uh, we know shadow with, shadow with a Sith. We get a few named and we see Ben yeah. Solo with him. Also in the rise of Kylo Ren, there's yeah. like seven or eight, but I do got to yeah. wonder, I never thought about this before when Grogu came up was Luke like, okay, Okay, first student, first student. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. Oh, okay, it looks like Yoda. Okay, sick, Ooh. awesome. I got this. I got this. <laughs> and then, like two days later, he's like, "I mean, I guess you can leave. Sure, fine. Sorry." Yeah. Like he was like yeah. so close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the man. only student in the galaxy. And then he's like, "Nah, ain't for me." Yeah, that's so crazy. That's- his, his failure rate was one hundred percent at that point. <laughs> yes. If someone else was like touring the I new know. academy. I was like, so what's yeah. your graduation rate? I know. Currently zero. <laughs> I, exactly. Currently zero. You know, I will. I will say that I feel like I feel like the canon side of that storytelling is a little more personally realistic to me, though. Right? Like that oh, for starting yeah. a new school. I think. Yes. So. Yeah. Like like yeah. Luke. By the time Return of the Jedi rolled around, he has like just figured out how to be a Jedi Knight right like yeah. he's just barely figured it out right he's had yeah. his first real hard trial by facing the emperor and yep you know vader and all that stuff so to go from that to being this all-powerful wise you know mm. pull the star story out of the sky type of visualization yeah. that you get a little bit in legends like you know that always really bothered me about the commentary around uh yeah. you know the sequel trilogy that luke is this ultra powerful guy and all this kind of stuff because it is feels like it felt like more of a stretch in legends that he yeah was he just he suddenly figured it all out right so i I like that that we have this slower growth of uh of luke in canon i think it's very very interesting storytelling and you know now that we're thinking about it putting all the pieces together too the fact that he's literally just assembling the rocks for the temple in mandalore era book of boba fett is kind of insane that he's got his little ant droids yeah he's been like because the thing is, he's he's lived on a sand planet his whole mm. life. He's talked to, I think, canonically, what, three women ever? Like, <laughs> the guy is not a principal, you know? He's like, I'm not an oh, architect. Man. I don't know how to build a temple. <laughs> like, I know. But I don't know. You, you meditate enough, you learn a lot of stuff. But that gets Just us so Man- different. Yeah, it gets us Mando 1, Mando 2, Book of Boba Fett. That's kind of like the main Favreau Filoni-verse stuff right now. Uh, Charles, the next main TV show era, takes us obviously back in time and who else better to set it up than you my friend tell us about our next show and where it takes place yeah so our next show arguably arguably the best show maybe my not argued show. by any of us <laughs> uh obi-wan kenobi guys season one i see is written in the outline someone's hopeful <clears throat> you never know <laughs> um yeah obi-wan kenobi season one so this actually takes place in nine bby so we're what we're 20 years before where we just were uh reign of the empire era is what this falls under so this is of course when uh you know it's not a problem if you don't look up type of attitude is pervasive in the galaxy the empire is very very oppressive during this time it's a it's a dark time in fact you might call it a dark time Hmm. um i love this time period i love this time period so much because i know we're going to talk about what was going on in this it, it, like other stories other than this show that were going on but like this is i don't know i i like the dark part of stories like i love empire like i love i love mm-hmm. seeing uh characters that i have grown to really love and appreciate like obi-wan kenobi and just see you take away the thing that makes them what they are you know mm-hmm. um i was watching that i was watching that kenobi uh documentary on disney plus earlier today actually and I really like what Deborah Chow said about how they they didn't want it to have anything to do with the Jedi. They wanted to they wanted it to be about Obi Wan the man, right? So yeah. I think when you're you're met with these hard times, there's a lot of character development there. It's really a great foundation for for really digging mm-hmm. into a character and understanding who that character is. And Star Wars does that very well. I think the Kenobi TV show did it very well. And so did a lot of the other stories that are in this time period. Yeah. I think for me, just just to start us off right away, the most impactful one for me when I was doing the research for this episode, which is actually, honestly, selfishly, it was very fun researching this episode because I had no idea about these these ties. Obi-Wan is in 9 BBY. Solo is in 10 BBY. So if you ever want to think, where is Han and where is Obi-Wan? You, we literally have those visual comparisons. 
<laughs> that they're a year apart. Um, yeah. So and that and solo ends, I should say specifically, it ends in ten BBY because there's that small time jump from the beginning. Um, but that's huge for me. Also, <clears throat> a new dawn by John Jackson Miller, where Kanan and Hera get to meet. That's eleven BBY, so it's two years before Obi Wan, and then thirteen BBY. You know, slightly older. That's Most Wanted by Christy Golden. So Han and Kira as young, you know, white worms, if you will. <laughs> and then for a lot of folks <laughs> listening here, uh, uh, another highly impactful one in 14 BBY, five years before Obi-Wan, that's Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. I think so, it's yeah. Most Wanted by Ray Carson. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I said Christy Golden, it's Ray Carson. Thank you, thank uh, you, thank you. I just want to give Ray Carson credit because I freaking love that book. I <laughs> yeah, agree completely. Fantastic. You're so right. Uh, but yeah, all the <clears throat> solo stuff happening around Obi-Wan was fascinating to me because like, we get a little empire with Han like, joining up and we know it's full, but seeing that this is who Vader is during the yeah. time of the events of Solo. Uh-huh. Like, uh-huh. that is the power of the empire right mm-hmm. now. And Obi-Wan and Han are both kind of on either sides of the empire mm, at the same yeah. time. And I thought I, that was fascinating. Yeah. I never even thought about, I, I would think that solo was later. Not same, like, same. like it took, like it was way before Obi-Wan, you know, yeah, that's what I would have thought. But I also think not to mess with you too bad, but Han Solo looks like that. And Princess Leia looks like that at the same time. Sorry guys. <laughs> Oops. Ooh, I don't <laughs> like that thought. Oh my god. Okay. Let's just blow right past that. Uh, all right. Um listen, I have a I have a weird opinion about about this that I've uh, sort of changed over the years uh, in regards to this canon storytelling, this reign of the empire Ooh. era. The, you know, the first thing I want to point out is that reign of the empire. All right. So let me back up a little bit. I'm a little bit more of a timeline nerd than I've ever let on. You know, in fact, when I first started UT, Trevor, did you hear that? Trevor, did you hear that? (laughs) Trevor and I have talked about this and he should know because I'm so opinionated about when we make major timeline changes. When I first started UT way back in the day, like the same year that I started UT, I actually built out this crazy huge spreadsheet to track my Star Wars books. Like, I think it was sort of you know, that experience was sort of a foundational journey that led to the realization that, holy crap, this is very confusing. There's for people like, how can we make this easier for people? Um, You know, so, but like this era always really bothered me in Star Wars storytelling because uh, the difference between canon and legends here is insane. We're gonna talk about legends here in a second, but like uh, canon recently in the last year or two, I think they redefined this entire era and called it reign of the empire era, yes. which is like, we got a, we got an official name. It used to be called rise of the empire. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second, but reign of the empire is a great name because what it was, the empire is all powerful and all controlling and all this sort of stuff. And in early storytelling, when we got rogue one and we got rebels, like, Every time we would get new projects in this era, I would get a little bummed out, weirdly, like because I feel like it was the easiest storytelling, right? Like it's nothing new or revolutionary. It's the oh, the empire is all powerful. You're all oppressive. We got to fight them. You know, I feel like it was kind of lazy a little Mm. bit. But Mm. as time has gone on, we've gotten more and more really rich storytelling in this period. They've taken a lot of risk and done really interesting stuff with it. The solo film is fantastic. And uh, we get to see like war in that, like with, uh, you know, Mim- Mim- Mimban, is that you say Mimban? Mimban the yeah. mud planet. Yeah, Let's Mimban call it and- war. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, we get all this really rich storytelling in this era and it it is suddenly a lot richer. Like it's not just, yeah. yes. it's not just the empire is oppressive and the rebellion is, you know, building. It's like, we're getting a lot of looks at this grassroots movement that was yeah. the rebellion, which is so interesting and fun. This, you know, maybe the maybe the let's rescue the Jedi. What was it called? The 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 Jedi, like Underground Railroad. What's it called in Star Wars? I can't remember. <laughs> oh, they, the, uh, the, the, path. the path, the path. Yeah, the path. Right. Yes. We're getting that just kind of starting to be explained. So we're getting a lot of this yeah. really interesting storytelling that is taking place. That was because yeah. the rebellion previously... started before Revenge of the Sith. Like Bail and yeah. Mothma and Padme in those deleted yeah. scenes had already right. started it. So it may it makes yeah. no sense for the rebellion to restart brand right. new 10 years exactly. out. Like, no they were going so it's not so it's really the opposite of the easy way out because you know where a lot of these characters end up <clears> and you're right. kind of shoehorned so how do we make this interesting like how do we make this yeah. compelling and they've mm-hmm. done quite well with a lot of these projects you'll notice a lot of us are saying like oh that's one of my favorites that's one of my favorites it's it's great it's just a great time yeah. period 
And I, I think maybe my opinion about that, maybe this is a good a good time to shift gears in the legends a little bit. Yeah, let's do like it. I think my opinion on that is is largely because of what the legends version of this time period was. Cause you know, like you have in your notes here, Eric, it was surprisingly sparse, right? Not like, a lot. Not a lot it of is legends books. Kind of crazy to me, actually. And I think that is maybe why it was sort of my gut reaction to always feel that like Oh, great. We get more rebellion versus empire storytelling in canon. Like, because that's what it was in Legends. We had yeah. Revenge of the Sith. Suddenly the empire is all powerful. And then that's it. We get, you know, episode four. It's, and that was this, that was the gap. Like, and, and, yeah. and, you know, obviously when you think about it, that, you know, it obviously sort of falls apart of like, of course there had to be a grassroots movement. Of course the rebellion had to gradually build their power and all this secret undercover spy stuff has to happen, but they just didn't take those risks in legends. We didn't really get right. this, this storytelling, you know, we have, um, there's a couple of big standout stories in this period, the paradise yeah. snare, the, the, the AC Crispin trilogy. Yep. Um, the Han Solo trilogy is kind of during that period. Um, you yeah. know, we got this. Uh, Wes, as you're scrolling the timeline, I'm remembering some of these. The Course Not yep. Nights trilogy, yep. which is like which are which are coming in the next show though, because there's actually a significant gap. There's a there's like yes. a ten year gap yeah. between those, which is right. insane. Yeah, but look at this timeline as Wes is scrolling yeah. through. There's like not there's nothing here. There's like yeah, there's peak but Empire Legends, stuff. But Legends was very much, I think, about expanding upon mm -hmm. what george did like people didn't yes. really want it they wanted to go george forward did. it was yep. yeah yeah it was it was and that is that is why i uh, you know what i was saying earlier about the whole era thing changed is so different in legends this was called the rise of the empire era and this annoyed the living shit out of me uh because yes. the rise of the empire area in the back of the books in their or sorry the beginning of the legends books like it starts before phantom menace so the the rise of the empire era you know per the you know, the powers that be that decided what the names of the eras were in Star Wars was starting with Phantom Menace, which kind of makes sense, right? The Empire is secretly yeah. building its yeah. power, right? I mean, you can start Phantom it in Plagueis, Menace. frankly. Yeah, I would say right exactly. exactly. before that, yep. right? Yep, yep. Right at that time period is was the defined era for Rise of the Empire. And that continued all the way until zero BBY with, <laughs> you know, episode four, which is like, how is that... That doesn't make any sense. It wasn't that the empire wasn't rising during that all that period of time. It rose for like three films and then it was ultra powerful for this 20 year span. Right. So it always bothered me that Clone Wars kind of fell into that, that time. And if you have been a, a you know, you teeny fan all this, all this time, you know, the last couple of years, you've probably seen our timeline iterations over the years. We redefined that ourselves at Utini in those early years. Like our timeline didn't just say, uh, it didn't just say, like rise of the empire we had some our own that we had like man what was it i wish trevor was here you could tell us we had like we had some I mean, special we made our own for, eras yeah we did we made our own eras yeah, and it yeah, was like yeah. the phantom menace had its own era and it was like something yep. about the birth of anakin and that sort of thing the chosen one something about uh, that and then like we had a clone wars era and we yeah. had some, i think i honestly i actually think it might have been reign of the empire i can't remember like, i think yeah, it might have been because there weren't official canonized ones they at that point we, we made them up us. and then i remember the day they announced them we got into slack be like Change the site! Change the site! There's official was a eras! Shit load of work, by the way. It was, it was a a, so work. much work had to happen. And we were sort of we we're sort of eating crow a little bit for like yeah. having to say that uh having invented our own eras as a way to completely yeah. redefine all that. But yeah, so Canada, this is like an interesting I'm sorry, I'm really chatty about this. This is one of the things that I'm particularly passionate, passionate about. Man. Yes, in also, the Star Wars also, timeline. It's like, it's like 3 p.m. where you are. You're like at your peak That's energy. True. <laughs> I know, I am. That's true. It's true. It's very, very bright. <laughs> the rise of the Empire era, or the reign of the Empire, if you will, is in canon, is vastly superior to yes. the Legends version of this, in my opinion. And I, I just, I cannot believe how right canon has gotten it and this is the perfect discussion about andor being here is because andor is the tv show that we really desperately needed in legends that we never had of like what does the very very early stages of you know boots on the ground soldiers of the rebellion what are they up to like how did they get in yes we all we've always had the Mon Mothma and, and, you know, Bail Organa and their political intrigue secretly, their little pact, what was it called? The against Palpatine. Oh, whatever. the, uh, the, like the, the Confederacy the, of, of the 200 systems. Yeah. The 200, whatever that, yeah, we've always someone, had that. That's, someone that in the chat always, will throw it in. I'm sure. Yeah. That's, that has always been the story in, uh, in legends. We've never had 
the soldier side of it, which is why Andor I think is so utterly exciting. And yep. like all of the stories that have taken place in this era are so interesting. Saw Guerrera, like there's so much good shit yeah. in canon that was not in Legends that Saw- like, God, yeah. Saw Guerrero, the hardest working man in Star Wars. <laughs> um, before we get to Andor, though, because I, I, gosh, that all that is absolutely true. We're gonna bat. We're gonna now go back in time ten years. We're gonna stay in the reign of the Empire, because that, my friends, is when we get Bad Batch season one, uh, the last of kind of like the main shows on Disney <clears throat> Plus, others outside of the Clone Wars, Rebels, etc. All the new shows. Bad Batch season one takes place nineteen BBY before the Battle of Yavin. This is also in the Reign of the Empire era, and this is around that time we were just discussing. Revenge of the Sith is in 19 BBY. Mm. We literally see it happen in the pilot of the Bad Batch, right? I'm the but pilot. what I love, the, the pilot. <laughs> there are a couple really cool novels that I forgot happened simultaneously with this, uh, and that That's is Thrawn Ascendancy, <laughs> Greater Good, and Thrawn uh-huh. Ascendancy, Lesser Evil happen at the exact same moments. In the early mm-hmm. same year as Bad that Batch season is one. Insane to think about. That's happening in the chaos. Oh, wow. Yeah. But then additionally, for all y'all that are following at home, uh, that are book readers back in the normal, normal galaxy, quote unquote, Ahsoka by E.K. Johnston is an 18 yep. BBY. That's the year after. And from 22 <clears throat> to 17 BBY, so we're kind of spanning this era of, of Bad Batch. <clears throat> that's catalyst by James Luceno. So that's when you're getting um you're getting Galen and you're getting Krennic's kind of friendship and stuff like yeah. that. So as far as book recommendations, all that is happening whilst season one of the Bad Batch is going on. And this is like you were saying, Corey, this is kind of like the dense era of like yeah. right after Revenge of the Sith. And then there's that huge, <clears throat> quite literally 10 year gap of yeah. content before we get back to another show. Yeah, I mean, this this era is super, super interesting to me. And like if I have a like a dream timeline change for the you know, to happen in our lifetime, I would love to see this specific time period around Bad Batch to eventually become so rich, so dense with so many stories that this eventually gets its own era. Like this becomes That'd be like, sick. because honestly, there is a pretty stark difference between, you know, what happens in the, at the end of the Clone Wars, that tr- the, the transition from Clone Wars to Empire is almost, yeah. there's almost so much opportunity for rich storytelling in there that it could be, its own era, like the, yeah. I don't know what you would call it, empire transition <laughs> or like, I don't know, Some, ride, maybe weird. growth of the empire or rise of the empire, rise of the empire might actually work. I don't know, something like that to fit maybe into like this. Maybe like erecting the empire or something in that. Yeah. It was like rising. The erect empire. That the erect good. empire. That's it. There you go. I knew that yeah, was that coming good. from you. <laughs> I knew it was. <laughs> But yeah, I, mean, I love this is, stuff. This is the best yeah. part of Bad Batch to me is the, yes. you know, that the helmets are changing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And, that which was is what we're going to get. Yeah. Like seeing the clone war clones turn into stormtroopers. Like the reason that Project War Eagle was such a big part when they revealed that in season one was like, <laughs> oh my Eagle. God. Uh, yeah. They're also Auburn fans for some reason. Yeah. Um, Like it was odd because you're watching the heroes of the previous television show you loved. And the heroes of the prequel trilogy, the clones, slowly mm. turn into like the things you've been afraid of since you were a kid, the stormtroopers. Yeah. And like this is the moment where that happens. And also knowing <clears throat> that at the same time, there's a character like Thrawn who's fighting for his own freedom, who will eventually now become yes. part of the Empire. Like, yeah, the Lucas said it best, right? It's like poetry <clears throat> and rhymes. There's just yeah. conflicts going on, and there is a part I forget which book it is. I think it's greater good where we briefly just touch on like a war happening in another part of space. Like they hear about it as like a a brief news bulletin. And it's kind of chilling to realize that what's the biggest deal in the universe for us is like barely a Mm. thought for the chaos. And it's like, that kind of makes the galaxy feel really big. So I, I love that inclusion in the timeline. Yeah, you know, um, in, in that area, I think I think there's a lot of you know I have a lot of interest in World War II era and real life history, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of uh, you know in Star Wars and the rise of the empires in a lot of ways, sort of based on you know the rise of the Third Reich and mm-hmm. the Nazi yeah. rise to power in a lot of ways, and it is notably very different, I think, from real life. And you know, in in real life, the you know Nazi Germany rose to power over a fairly long period of time between World War One and World War Two, right? And mm-hmm. in Star Wars, we have 
it happens instantly, right? It yeah. happens when when the emperor just kind of declares himself, you know, the ultimate yeah. empire. He's the emperor he's now. He's been secretly building it in secretly building sight, it, right? Yeah. But like, you know, but all that happens on Coruscant, right? Like, yeah. what is the what is the how does the rest of the galaxy buy into the empire? Because that's what it would have taken, right? You would have had to take buy in from the empire. Like the empire wasn't large enough to just roll in a bunch of troops and take over every mm -hmm. single planet, right? There had right. to be political loyalty built and people buy into what the value of the empire is going to be. And that would be, yep. that would be fun to see that like a little bit more of that storytelling of like, we get glimpses of it. Another one that's in this time period that we don't really, that you don't have actually here is the, um, the project uh, Inferno uh the well i guess that's uh, later that's, that's much that's, yeah, that's much that's later. later that's much later i guess where you see the transition but like how did those planet what i was thinking of was like the loyalty planets like how did those planets become so loyal to the empire? yeah really like, into like, it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah what did that transition look like where they welcome the empire with open arms and they're not just clone troopers anymore now they're real yeah. imperials and it's a, it's a really rich opportunity right now. I think this is still pretty sparse, kind of like uh, the Empire stuff was in Legends. Um, oh, my God. Hold on. I, I'm there. a fake fan. I'm a fake fan in the, in the chat. I call it Project War Eagle because I guess I did watch too much freaking college football. It's Project War Mantle. Um, <laughs> uh, War Mantle. That's I true. don't like Auburn. CJ. CJ, <laughs> I'm so you. sorry. I don't know if it's catching you. Enjoy, War you, you, damn mantle. You enjoy the, War Damn Mantle? <laughs> God, Caroline's going to quit the team and CJ's going to leave Patreon. Uh, Stephanie uh, also coming in with the rescue to the delegation of 2000. Was delegation the of 2000. We Thank you. Earlier. Yeah, we will that all, right. Let us always hear the Living Force of Uchini. Mm. We will always let you know when we get something wrong. We will own it <laughs> because yeah. we are only humans. But we are um, certainly not trivia experts. That is not what we try to do at Uchini. We we simply want to try to put yet. the big pieces together so you can kind of figure that it's, out for it's yourself. It's an open so. book test for us at Uchini. We don't know yeah, yeah, stuff right yeah. now, but we can find you the answer. <laughs> I mean, does I anybody will... not have the timeline pulled up on their computer as we're discussing? Absolutely this? not. <laughs> <laughs> I will also say yes. though, what what's so fun? I think this is actually where. In this era for Bad Batch specifically, this is the era where actually canon and legends, I think, merge the most. They uh, do, because absolutely. As far as legends go, uh, around this era, the same year as Bad Batch Season 1, we get the Kenobi novel, which, because there's, again, this 10-year mm. gap, still technically could work. Then we have Order 66, the Republic Commando novel by Kieran Travis, same year. Imperial Commando, the 501st mm. by Kieran Travis, same year. And the Coruscant Knights trilogy by Michael Reeves, same year. And mm. all of these, I think, tonally in Legends very much fit. So if you are a canon reader that you, you find the Legends timeline a bit more confusing and, and you don't quite necessarily want to want to switch, but you want something else to read, <clears throat> I would actually recommend going right around 19 BBY, The Bad Batch, Adventures <clears throat> of Sith. A lot of these Legends novels, I don't think will break your brain too much because they're all very tonally similar to what the Empire is doing. Yeah. That'd be my that's recommendation. Good, that's that's good advice. I mean, I think, you know, the Republic Commando might be the most stretch, you know, in some ways, you know, yeah. there was, but, but in honestly, Kenobi in the course on Night trilogy, you could like just straight just up it. rip that, rip that legends banner off rip and just say they're canon, <laughs> like straight up, like just replace it with a blue and it says canon. Like what if they just quietly did that? And like, <laughs> you heard it here first guys. Legends is canon again. And we said, I it. know, I know it, they don't even tell anybody. They just start printing canon banner on it. And just, it's the only book. It's the only book that has. And then <laughs> they call can... it the essential canon collection. And they start yeah. re-releasing <laughs> them start with printing different it covers. Again. <laughs> Why oh, not? God. Just, just, just print money, baby. Uh, all right. So of course, all of this leads up to our final show of the night which is the show we'll all have watched in 48 hours. Uh, and that is Andor season one. Now, most importantly, as we said last week, but I will repeat it because it bears repeating. Season one all takes place in the same year, 5 BBY. Season two is split amongst 4, 3, 2, and 1 BBY. All for, but that, again, that's not this show. This season all takes place in 5 BBY, Reign of the Empire. We've been living there. We know it. Most importantly, Wes, you mentioned this earlier, so I want to mention it up top. <clears throat> this is the exact same year as Rebels Season 1. Same mm. year. Same galaxy, wow. baby. Okay. Okay. So Rebels Season 1. Ezra just gets discovered by um, Kanan. 
Spoiler yep. alert. Uh, um, and then... <laughs> what the hell, Wes? Come on. <laughs> Wes doesn't even care anymore. He's just over it. <laughs> oh, no. Am I going to say... Yeah. Am I going to get some like, sunny spoilers? day? Spoiler alert. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So It, it kind of... It's making more sense now. Sort of. But... We're getting you know, there. Yeah, we're, we're, getting we're getting there. I just... I'd like to know the setting of... Like, we yeah. st- we're starting with Andor by BBY. What is everybody yep. else doing, right? Yeah, there How are rebellion old cells. Is the Mandalorian right now? Oh God, I don't know that. I didn't put that in the notes. You can ask me questions. <laughs> is he a teenager? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What well, is this? He was Five a kid in the BBY. Clone Wars, right? He got rescued. He got rescued in the Clone Wars from Clankers. Like, so he's right. probably a teenager. 20? Um, he's twenty. Nineteen yeah, twenty, maybe about this time, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. He, uh, he can he's vote. Got all that testosterone in him. All right. I know. I know. Exactly. <laughs> How old is he in, uh, I don't know, how old is he? Think I have no idea how old he is. I feel like he's in his, get a guess. He's in his early 30s. Oh, I'm sorry, in Mandalorian. As so. a kid? Yeah. Do you think he's a kid? A 10-year-old maybe? 10 years? That's Probably a, 10. That's a nice round number, 10. So, yeah, he's yeah, 10. Yeah, that sounds 19, good. 10. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure, that math adds up. Whatever. <laughs> he's in his 20s. Uh, Rumble Season 1 takes place here. I also want to say, similarly, um, and obviously Obi-Wan happening four years earlier does help this out, but Leia, Princess of Alderaan, happens uh two years before or two years after this so two years after andrew season one is leia princess of alderaan and okay. then the thrawn novel is taking place from 11 bby to 2 bby so if you've read the canon <clears throat> thrawn novel you've gotten from just before obi-wan to like three years after andor so thrawn is doing all of that during these shows you know oh super chat alert what's up steven Steven says, I know this show, Andor, isn't supposed to have any, quote, fan service, but I wonder if any Rebels characters will show up in Andor. That's a good question. I actually kind of doubt it, to be honest. I would doubt uh, it, yeah, because I think they're doing their own season. I think they're meeting each other. Honestly, I mean, I originally really hated the the term Filoniverse when people started Mm -hmm. using it, because I feel like it does a little bit of a disservice to, like, Kathleen yeah, Kennedy and but folks, helpful. but like <laughs> it, it's, it's honestly so different. Like the stories yeah. that they tell are a little predictable as far as like who they're going to involve. And you know, it's the, a lot of ways, the Ezra, Ezra Bridger storyline, it all leads up yeah. to Ezra Bridger. Right. So yeah. Right. But would it be so terrible if you saw a chopper just roll away at the end of like the last oh, second of a scene? Why not? You're like, they oh, made that's... him for Ahsoka. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's I think true. it's possible, but I like this era about being so close to the rebellion because obviously with Andor more so than I would say the other films or the other shows where we know Cassian in Rogue One we know exactly where he's going and we know it's pretty close five years and he has to end the whole show as the guy who's gonna shoot that guy in the back in the alley like that's his that's his moral journey is becoming that guy who's still gonna shoot that guy in the back so yeah. I think that's so interesting that he's still in this time period of like the rebellion is almost ready. They're cooking. Like there's cells are growing. Leia's going into her power. Thrawn is going to be growing the up. Like everyone is mm. almost there. That's like true. everyone is almost at the original trilogy. And I think the simmering point is so fascinating for this show. And it's going to add so much tension. Um, because also like in, in the Legends universe right now, we get the Hut Gambit the second book of the Han Solo trilogy. We get the Han Solo trilogy by Brian Daly in 2BBY. And of course, we get the Force Unleashed in 2BBY. So everyone is kind of just just getting to, to episode four at this point. And I think that's so fascinating. And I think to your question, Stephen, and to our overall conversation, I think because of that, we're going to see much less of the main squad <clears throat> because... They're they're basically in episode four. We're ready. We're ready to go. Yeah. So this has to be something different. That's such an aha moment to me with the with the Han Solo thing about where he is at in this timeline. That's that's very yeah. interesting. We get a lot of Han weirdly, you know. Yeah. Han Solo is weirdly a good timeline marker until you know episode seven. <laughs> um, it really is. And then he would have been really useful if we had him past episode seven just to know where we are. <laughs> What do you mean? He's not in Pretty... episode eight? <laughs> what happened to him? Quick, quick plug. Speaking of that, um, this last weekend was the Podathon, which is a great podcast made up of like 15 Star Wars podcasts 
They all did uh, Star Wars shows for, to benefit Make-A-Wish. They obliterated their donation goal, raised over $16,000 for Make-A-Wish. It was incredible. And uh, Alden Diaz of Octo Radio interviewed Ryan Johnson, um, who came on. And that, mm. that interview is fully available. I listened to it at the gym this morning. And there was a really great question where Alden asked, hey, when you were pitched to do Last Jedi, did they tell you Han Solo was going to die? Because obviously he was writing it as they were filming Force Awakens, and apparently they didn't give him the script, but I never thought, like, can you imagine being a director, and they're like, hey, we want you to direct episode eight, and you're like, oh, dude, I got a great Han Solo story. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm so ready. I got it. So, quick play to talk to Ray, go listen to that. It's a great, it's an hour-long interview. It's really great. But that oh, was a really terrible, great moment where I was man. like, I never thought that. <laughs> About if Ryan wanted to use he's like on, this, he's like, "Thank God you asked." And he just has these. He's like, "I got this whole thing ready to go." And he's just like, "The Crispin uh, trilogy." Actually, <laughs> actually, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So, so, so uh, we, while I while I like that story, I was uh, yes. you know, really thinking that maybe we could get somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> also, not that that's not a great idea. I see, you know, one little small hiccup that could maybe mess with that a little yeah. bit. So we yeah. we 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 killed him. We killed. Him. He's dead. So all this. So we got all these shows now, guys. So we've hit all the Disney Plus main shows, a lot of Reign of the Empire, a little new, a little New Republic. And I know we're we're getting we're getting Star Wars shows in the future. They've told us um, the Acolyte is obviously going to be the High Republic era, which is so fun. I cannot wait. But there are still a lot of eras that, looking at all these, haven't quite been touched. That do have more books. That do have more comics. So I guess <laughs> as we're kind of like wrapping up these thoughts, I just want to ask you guys: in light of all these shows we're getting, and in light of Andor coming this week, is there an era? you now want them to explore whether it's feloni verse whether it's not what do you think could use maybe a show based on going through everything we've seen so far uh right off the top of my head gut reaction there are two of them that i really want Hit it. um one. i want just one i'll get one you get it too <laughs> you i want to know <laughs> i want to know the rise to power of the first order. That is still like the most gigantic. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Wes. I, you, want, I, you, want, you want the Hux show? Is it Armageddon? Yeah, Hux right. I really, I, yeah. I mean, there's just too many questions there, man. Yeah. Of like, how did we go from one yeah. gigantic, you know, empire controlling organization to another? Like, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, you know, uh, it's, 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 inexcusable yeah. <laughs> that we don't have That's this great. yet i really yeah. want it like i mean i feel like it's a gigantic hole in the storytelling that we still have not really even touched and you know i'll give you my one if nobody chooses my other one i'll, I'll tell you the other one <laughs> yeah jg pick up where aftermath ends aftermath empire's end yeah. has one of the most cinematic climactic finales and then they're like and then this thing got hidden and then we yeah, don't know it. what happened <laughs> to it i know at this point yeah, I would love nothing. that as well. I, I want to know both sides of it. I want to know what yes. the what the emperor is doing, like how he is gradually building the yep. power, you know, out in the outer reaches of space. I want to know how the new republic is gradually learning that there's this new threat. Like we get a little yep. bit of that in the in the Leia book. What is it by Claudia Gray? Uh, Blood Bloodline. I think it's Bloodline. Bloodline yep. Yeah, Bloodline. We get we get a little bit of it there that she's about to start this thing, like to figure out yep. that there's some there are some mysterious forces at work. But like that's <laughs> all we have, right? And yeah. I really want that explained. I want to know both sides of the picture. I want to see the Emperor's grand plan. It will honestly, if that is done, honestly, I, I think it will do even more to excuse my negative feelings on the Emperor still being alive in the Rise of Skywalker. If if we can get the I love that. yeah. A plausible explanation for how the First Order actually financially, economically, how did they do what they did in the outer reaches the books. of space? Yeah, I want to see I the books to, of the First you know, Order. An audit. And, and a lot of bonds. Of... Had a yes. lot of bonds they've been investigating. <laughs> yeah. I just know that story needs to involve Nash Windrider. I, I oh, want yeah. Nash Windrider Nash. in there. Yeah. I love a Nash show. Good yeah, stuff. get some any Elderon based stuff. Uh, Wes, you'll hear you're going to explode. I know Corey took your First Order. <laughs> What's your other one? Uh, um, I would like something before the High Republic in like the Jedi and Sith Wars of a thousand years ago. The slightly yeah. lower Republic. Um, yes. The, the <laughs> Sith have been extinct it's the, for it's a millennia. 
So no, just just the old republic. That's the canon old republic is what we need. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Is yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. No. Uh, <laughs> Yes. That not, old. yes, yes, pretty much. Oh, you're yes. talking like Bane, like Ken and Bane era stuff, right? Is that what you're um, saying? Yeah, anything I'd say before a thousand years. So when the Sith and the Jedi, when there was multiple Sith, much like the Bane yeah, area. Uh-huh. So yeah, yeah, something something along those lines, because that Couture one line from Kenobi, stuff. the Sith have been extinct for millennia. Yeah. What happened Which to also, millennia? Though, and the one? Acolyte, I'm <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. so it's gonna be dark side stuff with the higher public, and I'm like so the Sith were extinct for an era to you. That's maybe yeah, that's like, true. that's kind of the vibe right. I'm getting from this acolyte. Sh- like I would never also oh. number one, we haven't said it yet. The acolyte, the most attractive show in Star Wars there's ever going to be. That, <laughs> that cast is so hot. It's insane. I know they keep but, announcing casting directions. It's just like, really, do they have to be so attractive? It's, it's, ugh, you know, make them all. You're going to have to bring a fan. I have this stupid fan I've been wearing. It's so hot in Hawaii. It's, <laughs> it's around the neck, around your neck that blows one? in your face. Right here. Hold on. Oh my god, grab it. Because the problem is, guys, we all know what's gonna happen. Put your fan on because they're taking all these hot people. Those look like beats and it's a fan. Yeah, they do. <laughs> it's like little it's like little tiny beats. I wore them on the plane because my plane from <laughs> freaking Atlanta to Seattle had no air conditioning. It was oh, that's so right. Mad. It was but terrible. It makes sure those are I wore this. By Dre. Oh my god. It's so great. So great. But I look like a, a dude. Especially you have the hat. Hold on, let me get my full get up. Yeah, let's go. There you go. Cool hat. Oh, God. Here you go. Look at this. It, it looks yeah. like, it look like a <laughs> That's incredible. Tourist. Here's an easy thumbnail. Anyway, anyway, you're mispronouncing anyway, things anyway, on Hawaii. I will say, exactly. we're going to need all those fans because not only are they compiling the most attractive cast we've seen in Star Wars, likely a lot of these folks will be on the dark side, which means, as we know, <clears> black <throat> leather. So, like, just get ready, everybody, <laughs> for what this show's going to be. Oh, so, where are you going? Are you, do you want, uh, do you want, like, specifically, like, the Bane stuff i know you're such a huge fan of the bane stuff no you think not, bane not should specifically be in not specifically okay. no i think uh yeah. generalized um sith army would be interesting to pull out yeah and then they can and then they can branch off of that they don't have to immediately go mm-hmm. into bane yeah. because we've had like a bane. game of we've thrones house of, of the dragon type thing where it's like it's like giant armies political intrigue yeah, like yeah. actual like, like uh, dynasties you, and stuff those those utterly <laughs> incredible still to date best trailers of all time cgi trailers for the older public mmo stuff like tell yeah. those stories man yep. i would love that yes. that would be really yeah. good that would be good good stuff yeah. Wes. i'll uh i'll go very simple <clears> on this then and go the complete opposite direction I think the the storytelling of post episode nine is going to be on TV, straight up. I think oh. that that was my other one. Just for the record, I, I, oh, I don't do think I mean, so. <laughs> because they're not making movies anymore. <laughs> um, no, it I might. I, you know, that's point. a good. That's a good. That's a good point, though. I mean, it might be that might be how you convince the original cast to come back. That would be. I mean, that's my dream. I I I, mm. I earnestly do think. I know we we talk about this, and my my answer changes every week, and it always will. But currently, yeah. I don't think we're going to get a Star Wars episode 10. I think that, like, offshoots of movies like Rogue One, Solo, etc. I mean, Rogue Squadron just got shelved for a bit. Uh, who knows? But I do think that with Disney oh, Plus, <laughs> you have, like, it, you have oh, an amount of subscribers. You know your budget. You don't have to meet certain metrics. Like, there is more freedom, it seems, creatively. And now that Andor is is exploring the idea of, no, we can actually go shoot at Pinewood. We can go on location with the television <clears> show and use that amount of budget and care. I'm thinking that, is that how we get the new Jedi Temple? Is that how we get the evolution of the Ray Finn, Poe yeah. storyline? Even if it's not with those characters, I would just love somewhere in the future to go. I think it would be a the, disservice the, yeah. if we didn't have them older. They could have cameos. I mean, give them even yeah. cameos. Like yeah. Ray is leader of the, you know, the Jedi Order or something, and she's off on like a sabbatical type mission, right? Where she's off studying, where you get some glimpses of her, maybe, and that's yeah. kind of it, maybe. But like, yeah, yeah, I'm totally with you. I think that TV is lower risk. I think you know Disney is not afraid to take as many risks with the with the TV shows. Like, I don't think they're gonna do something stupid the way they did with the. Uh, the sequel trilogy, like not putting a black guy on the friggin' poster because China's racist. China's, like, I mean, yep. Yeah. Like screw that. Screw that stuff. That stuff doesn't really happen with TV because it's much more tight. Like it's harder to push a streaming service in a foreign country than it is just to run a single film. Yep. So, right. Like I think uh, maybe that is they how should you al- they should them. also be paying John Boyega just reparations money for all of that for forever. Probably. Like the, Absolutely. I'm sorry tax. We were assholes in China. Like, 
let's be yeah, clear that was that was shitty i mean did uh, uh sorry because i'm on this i've been thinking about this a lot actually because yeah, of yeah, the, yeah. Just the, because of that conversation we had with rise of skywalker like rose a lot of questions for me that i didn't think we were gonna address for a long time um what did what was the john boyega d23 did we ever find anything else about, no, about that it was a rumor and it wasn't true it wasn't true nope. Okay. Nope. Okay. I don't know if I missed something in that regard. So nope. He's just making movies. He's in the Woman King uh, that came out this weekend. That looks very good. But he's just making movies, living his life. Well, um, um, what's what's his name? Who played Poe Dameron? Was just in the Oscar Marvel Isaac. Show. Isaac. Oscar Isaac Moon was just Knight. in. Yeah. I'm so bad with names. I'm so sorry. Oscar Isaac was just in Moon Knight, right? So Always he's obviously possible, willing man. to do Disney Plus TV. So I don't know, man. Maybe you're right. Maybe TV is where we get that answer. I, I always thought fun. it might be books, but. I think you're probably right. Probably going to be TV. Overall, I think the TV future of Star Wars is so exciting. I will also say, for, for that point you just raised, Corey, like the Acolyte, based on that casting, is also showing that they're done shying away from people of color in their shows. They're yeah, like, we're uh -huh. not messing. We're, we're just going forward. We're making right. these amazing shows. And for everyone listening to kind of recap everything, if, you, if, you, if all the timeline stuff has gotten even more convoluted somehow... Let's end by saying, here is the order of the show. Is Wes, I hope you have a paper and pencil. What about Charles? We didn't, Charles didn't tell us his era. Oh, wait, Charles, you didn't. But you no, you just said, took all the you? gigantic... No, yes. no, no, Charles said... No, you said a thing. No, he didn't. I said a thing. I did not say a thing. All right. But I'll say a quick <laughs> thing. Done. Matt, edit that out. I'm kidding. We don't edit the show. I'll say a quick thing. I want more around the Phantom Menace time period because I think that's... A smaller gap, mm, but because that's where the pod racing gap. is. <clears throat> that is where the pod racing is. <laughs> you want to know about uh, Master Sifidius? I get it. I want to know more about Sifidius. I want to see Young Dooku. I mean, uh, there's there's definitely story to tell there, but it's a, it's a smaller time period, and there's been plenty of prequel love. We gotta we gotta mm -hmm. spread it out some. I agree. I think that I mean the prequel kids. We all grew up. We're loving this stuff. They're putting a lot of references. I saw a tweet today that said, is Plo Koon's mask in Andor? Like, there's a thing, like, let's keep our eyes yeah. open, everybody. Plo Koon's mask um, in Andor, that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a very interesting one. I mean, obviously, I'm such a big fan of Plagueis. I would love for Plagueis to be brought mm -hmm. into some kind of TV project. I mean, honestly, some kind of, uh, it might be interesting to see a show where you get, like, eight episodes and you get, you get, like the previous it goes in reverse order we start with palpatine's rise to power and then he ends with him telling a story about Plagueis, maybe and then we get the next episode That'd is Plagueis's cool. rise to power then we get a story with him telling about how he yeah. killed his master and then, then you just keep going backwards all eight episodes you see the previous eight sith that'd be fun yeah something like that yeah i mean ultimately if, if good creator and it's same with books right whenever there's a good creator on a project we're gonna have fun with it so give them the free reign to do their thing we've all we've read the books where we can see the studio notes and it doesn't work as well we've read the books where they clearly had free reign to do whatever they wanted and it's awesome same with the shows so i think going forward here's your timeline everybody bad batch andor obi-wan mando mando book of boba fett this is the chronological order of where we are and before we do anything else guys i want to ask you a very important question <clears throat> When are you planning to watch Andor? And are you going to do it all at once? Is this a before work? Is this a before surf and turf? Like, it, like what is <laughs> what is the Andor healing plan? You. Because I said earlier, I took the morning off of work. I'm waking up. I'm turning the phone off. I'm I'm shutting the curtains. Head. I'm doing all three right in a row. Um, so I want to know what you guys are going to do. That's a good question. Uh, what time Wednesday... does it come out for you, Corey? What time would you oh, be shit, able to actually, watch it? I don't know that. I don't know. That's it might be question. out now for Corey. Like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when does it come out? Actually, it's it's midnight, midnight Pacific. Pacific time, right? So that is yeah, that is what like nine p.m. Three hours before that, yeah, nine p.m. Wait, yeah. no, what? Midnight no. Pacific. Nine p.m. on nine, Tuesday. 10, 11, 12. Yeah, yeah, that's nine p.m. on Tuesdays when that will come out. Holy you shit! Just... I can watch that. Wait, watch it tomorrow. I was like. Also, that's an and it's an hour forty. It's two hours. You can just watch a movie. That's like oh totally reasonable time, actually. Damn, I might just oh, do that. I'm I was gonna so say so convenient for you, Corey. Jeez, oh, everybody yeah. else has to. Like, Corey, wake you're gonna up jump on our indoor Slack channel and be like, "Guys, did you all watch it?" <laughs> I <laughs> know exactly. It's like three a.m. for everybody. I know the time thing has been ridiculous. Every morning, I wake up with like three hundred wow. Slack messages. But and... real talk, that's. 
That's probably yeah, a good I guess, idea. I'm going to do that tomorrow. So it's, I guess that's tomorrow as itinerary. I'm going to go do a helicopter tour. We're going to go have a nice dinner. I'm going to come home and freaking watch Andor. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. Uh, I am. I am waiting tomorrow evening, probably somewhere around 9 p.m. Mm. Wednesday. So hold 24 hours from you, Corey. Mm. I'm going okay. to um, get the workout in. Specifically, take a shower, <laughs> climb into bed. I might let the dog up. The dog never comes into the bed with me because he sheds. But this might be an exception. He might jump up there mm. with me and we'll watch cuddle. two hours. That's right. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Right. Dog. <laughs> yeah, best cuddling. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm with you, Wes. I'm going to be dodging spoilers all day. I'm going to put my phone on Do Not Disturb. I'm going to duck out all the Slack channels, all the You're Discord gonna channels. To. It's yeah. going to be a, a Wednesday evening watch for me. Yeah. Excellent. And for everyone listening again, uh, well, hopefully you already watched <clears> it. <throat> but everyone watching... Uh, all the recommendations say try to do all three at once. I know it's a big ask. It should be less than two hours. Treat it like a movie night and just indulge. We're not going to get this kind of release very often. From here on out, they're one a week. But let's let's really enjoy our first proper Star Wars movie in like three years. I think that's super yeah. fun. Wow, that's um, a cool thought. Yeah. And I do want to say now we're, we're, we're finalizing the times, but uh, Bounty Hunt is planning to come back this weekend. So we are going to be going over the first three episodes in one chunk on an episode of Bounty Hunt this Saturday or Sunday. We'll post um, Twitter. We'll do Discord channels. We'll, <clears> we'll figure out when we're going to do it. We did the first two episodes of Obi-Wan, or first three episodes of Obi-Wan that way. So if Andor is supposed to be in one chunk, it, it seems only fitting. So stay tuned uh, for our thoughts. And next week on the main show, though, we will be going back into book world, my friends. Uh, I mean, we'll tell you what we thought about Andor a little bit at the beginning. We, we won't be able not to, but we're doing Princess and the Scoundrel next week. Part one of our roundtable uh, with Beth Revis. Of <clears> course, <throat> our interview with Beth Revis is on our audio uh, podcast feed. So go make sure to listen to that beforehand. Our reviews are on the site, but uh, I can't wait to dive into this one. And I guess, uh, I don't know, fellas. It's weird signing off for the for the first time before... A new, new, show, new show, new show alert, new show, new show coming. Oh, yeah, it's finally real. back. It's <laughs> real. real. Cassie, all right. And with that, my friends, I will say, Cassie and Ander. And that'll do it uh, for this week's episode of The Living <laughs> Force. If you can support us on Patreon, thank you so, so much. We hope you're enjoying the Asheville documentary. Thank you for all the positive feedback. Keep letting us know what you want to see, and we'll make it for you. A special thank you goes out to Brian Dooley, Patrick Ortiz, Earl Q, Robert Thomas, and Carl Sander on our Jedi High Council, and Elizabeth Cloutier, <laughs> Sally and Chris Eilerson, and Ashley, our newest person on our Alliance High Command, for their amazing support. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Eric Eilerson. Corey is at Corey M. Helton. Charles is at C. Hankel. Wes is at Boss Wes. A special thank you to Matt Davenport, our amazing editor, Ryan, our graphic designer extraordinaire, and Wes, our producer and community manager. Thank you to Corey, Charles, and Wes for potting with me tonight. Thanks to all of you for watching and listening. And as always, may the force be with you. <laughs>